You're listening to Feed, Play, Love, a podcast that's all about supporting parents as they bring up children. We've got experts and advice to help you through the more challenging bits of parenting. I'm Siobhan Hunt. Having a gravely ill child is bad enough when you're able to get the treatment you need at your local hospital. But what's it like when you have to travel hundreds of miles and leave everything behind just to get the treatment they need? Kylie Burley and her family had to experience this when her son Sam was 12 years old. They live in Griffith and had to travel around seven hours to Randwick in Sydney so that Sam could get the help he needed. Fortunately for them, they were able to stay at Ronald McDonald House in Sydney. Kylie and her husband Craig join me now. Welcome to you both. Thanks, Siobhan. Hi, Siobhan. Hello. Kylie, um, tell me how you found out that Sam was seriously unwell. Um, well, Sam's a, a very sporty child and he was just um, continually lacking energy. He was like, seemed like flu-like symptoms. Both Craig and I kept taking him to the um, doctors probably every three or four days. Uh, he ended up spending um, three days in hospital where they put him on steroids, which... Um, was really good because he actually played an AFL grand final that week. Um, but things just kept going down and um, we're just trying to get get to the bottom of it, um, blood tests all the time. So after um, five weeks, the doctors actually called us in and, and, and told us the news that Samuel had leukaemia, acute lymphoblastic leukaemia, and they had a bed waiting for us in Sydney and we were to go straight to the hospital to prepare to get on the ambulance air airplane. So, yeah. So you have two other children aside from Sam. How do you handle that kind of crisis as a family? We just, you just stick together. You've got a, almost like a job to do. And our Sam's brothers are both older than him and, and working, so they just sort of took the reins at home and we went off to Sydney to try and get Sam better. So you, um, Craig, you and Kylie went together. Did you know where you were going to stay? Yeah, no, we actually didn't go together. The plane was waiting for Sam and I. We could only have no more than 15 kilos on the plane and that was a bit of a question mark in case the plane had to pick up other um, emergency patients so it was only Samuel and myself with, we didn't even really get time to go home from the doctors. Craig got to go home and he travelled with our middle son, Reed, with the car. So he was at a, at a loss, just relied on Google Maps to, to find out where he had to go. But Sam and I were directed with the airplane and the ambulance. So, yeah. So yeah. did you, Kylie, know you were going to be staying at Ronald McDonald House then or you were just thinking about getting to the hospital? No, no, we were just thinking about saving Sam at the time. Same with Craig. Someone met Craig the next day. I think by the time we got to bed it was midnight and I think the social worker led Craig and our other son, Reed to um, a parent room in the hospital and I had like a pull-out bed next to Sam's hospital bed. So we actually didn't know about Ronald McDonald till a couple of days. So, Craig, you can answer that actually because you had the conversation with the social worker. Yeah, our social worker, she was really good. And after a couple of days, which is what the emergency accommodation at the hospital was for, yeah, we got, got told about Ronald McDonald House and they had a room for us. It was really good. It's great that you got that accommodation, but I can imagine that must have been really terrifying for you, Kylie. Like, I know that you got that result, but to know that you had to fly down so quickly and leave everything to, behind, what was going through your head? Um, everything was a fog and people just led you in the right direction. Obviously, we're not from Sydney. We don't really know about Sydney. I was just trying to navigate you know, if I had to move from a different floor of the hospital, like directions were, were really bad. So um, I think I was worried about where we were going to, going to stay, but I actually don't think we worried for long because our social worker was like a knight on a white horse. And then um, she took 
Craig down to Ronald McDonald House and he met the staff there. We saw our room. We had enough beds for our other two children and it was just really comforting that we had a place to say we, we actually had no idea how long we would be there. We didn't get home until three months and then Sam's treatment was over two years. So Ronald McDonald House was like our second home but I don't actually think there was enough time to even panic about where we're going to stay until, you know, Ronald McDonald House was was there. So it was just one big worry that we didn't have to face, which was fantastic. We'll never forget that. What were the staff like at Ronald McDonald House? What was the place itself like? It was almost like having a, you know, you were a home if you want to make it that way. If you don't want to make it like a home, then I guess that it could be like that for you. But we sort of took it and ran with it and all the staff were fantastic and we helped out where we could and helping others as well because there's always someone worse off than yourself. Yeah, so you were sharing that space with families who had other children that were at the hospital being treated. What was that like? For us, it was kind of a double-edged sword probably, like, you know the families they they get it they you're you know fighting in the um in the troughs with them so you know you've got the same interest and that's kind of you know to to support your child so that comes number one so we found it quite comforting to be around families that actually knew what you were going through and that were away from home away from the rest of their family away from work that was quite comforting. As well as that, we kind of shared experiences. When you're from the country, it's really quite daunting to be in the city. I can remember um, staff at the house giving us an Opal card. Well, we'd never had an Opal card before or even caught the bus, so we, we had no idea. So some of the families really helped and said, you know, go down to Coogee Beach or this is, you know, a really good restaurant you should go to. And so that was really good as well. And um it didn't really matter who you were, where you'd come from, your background story. Everyone was there for number one reason, and that's to support their seriously ill child. What was happening for work for you guys? I mean, how did you manage that when you needed to be with Sam? Yeah, well, for me, I worked for the education department, so I had a fair amount of leave. So I was able to drop everything and this country community, you always everyone jumps in and help support you so I didn't have to worry about work for Craig was a little bit different he's self-employed that must have been tough I was fortunate I had a friend uh, and tradesman that jumped on was coming back to the trade and and uh, he jumped on and pretty much took over my business and the apprentices I had so that was pretty good plus our eldest son came back and he picked up the reins as well so your sort of life's on hold and you don't really worry probably about work too much until you actually get home. It's more about your child at that time. And with the diagnosis that Sam had, Kylie, how long did it take before you felt that there was hope or that he would be okay? Sam's very fortunate. So he was standard treatment the whole way through. Um, It probably did take probably two weeks, hey, Craig, like once he'd had all the tests and then I remember having a meeting and it was, you know, Sam will survive. It After that, it was like just a bit of a journey. The hospital doesn't give you too much ahead. It was only, you know, this is what you're doing next week and then the week after we'll tell you then. So it was bits and pieces. But actually, ever since we landed in the hospital, I always felt that he was with the right people and he was in the the right spot so then we got there early October and I can remember them telling us probably a month in that we wouldn't be home for Christmas so I struggled with that I think Sam struggled with that but Craig was rather good because he had heard that Ronald McDonald put on a great thing and it's quite exciting to be in the house over Christmas so whenever any of us were down it probably wasn't both of us at the same time it was either or so that's kind of how we how we worked as a team, I think. And um, so Sam now is uh, doing his HSC, is that right? Oh, he's a, he's in year 11. Yeah, Sam's doing amazing. So um, Sam's an inspiration really to everyone around him. So he was really determined to get back to sport and get back to his life. 
he has a lot of empathy for other people, probably did have before his diagnosis, but even more now. I think he really acknowledges some of the children that weren't as fortunate as him and unfortunately passed away. So every time he plays football, he has love Gabe on his strapping, on his tape, and that's just acknowledge that, you know, Gabe's passed and, and Sam's, Sam's there. So side effects put him in a wheelchair for about eight months um, when he was ready to return to sport. So that was a bit upsetting for him. So now he's talking about becoming a physiotherapist. Sam wasn't going to let anything sort of stop him. So, yeah, he's he's amazing, a really fit and healthy boy now. Um, he eats healthily and he really looks forward to life and it's fantastic. He's doing really well. Has the experience changed you, Kylie, and yourself, Craig, um, in terms of how you are as a family? I mean, do you feel like the experience has changed you? I guess so. We always sort of try and stick together, and I think with what happened, the bo- the boys are really stuck stuck by us, and they still do now. And we just yeah, try and you try and stay close and do things together a whole lot more. How about you, Kylie? Well, we always kind of say we're team Burley, so we all worked hard at that, but also it was quite easily, and all all of us had our part to play. Um, Craig and I would often tap in and tap out whenever um, Sam had what we call the roid rage when he's on steroids and and wants a certain chicken or something like this or <laughs> a popcorn. So it was always like, oh, I'm tapping out and the next one would tap in. I don't know. I don't know whether it was because of Sam's age or, or what, but we just all stuck together and um, and the boys now, the t- his two older brothers, they just look after him so much and they always said, you know, he was the youngest by by a few years and he was a bit spoilt, but now he's the youngest with cancer so he gets super spoilt. So <laughs> the, bo- the boys will often say to Samuel, you ask dad because he won't say no to you. So everyone uses it the way they <laughs> need to. So, um, yeah, I've just been amazed at the strength of the whole family, actually. I wouldn't uh, wish this journey on anybody, but um, we've actually found some positives through our two years of Sam fighting cancers. Kylie, I understand that Ronald McDonald House are raising money through a campaign called Pause for Sick kids where they're encouraging people to go into different categories and compete with photos of their pets what would you say to people thinking about getting involved in this oh look any way you can get involved to support ronald mcdonald house do it It, it's so needed you know i've heard of families before they've heard of the house having to you know sleep in their cars and you know, when you, you know, number one is to be there with your child, not to worry about where you're going to sleep, being cold at night. And, and, you know, for us that are country people, we, you know, to have all the buzz of the city life around us is, is really daunting, but having a, a, you know, home away from home where you feel safe, I just couldn't imagine what our life would have been like without it. Yeah. And the pause campaign is that's a little bit close to our hearts too because we were there when Wilbur was first introduced to the house and we have two dogs at home and I know in particular Sam was really missing his pets. So to have a dog in the house was just, you know, a little bit more, you know, trying to make the house more homely, which we really appreciated and we appreciated um, Wilbur being there. That was nice. Well, Kylie and Craig, thank you so much for chatting with us today. And I'm really pleased to hear that Sam's doing so well. So thanks so much for your time. No, thank you. That's Kylie and Craig Burley. And if you'd like to get involved with Pause for Sick Kids, check out the links in the notes of this episode. Feed, Play, Love is a babyology podcast produced and presented by me, Siobhan Hunt. I'd love to hear from you, so if you'd like to get in touch, email me at feedplaylove at theparentbrand.com.au. See you next time.